After heavy criticism from Western media for leaving the three Tiangong astronauts without a backup escape vehicle, China has finally come up with a bold and risky rescue plan. Even more striking, they acted so fast that NASA was practically left in shock, especially compared to how the Starliner issue was handled earlier this year. So, what exactly is China's plan? And how does it stack up against NASA's approach? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. China just made a move that looks downright reckless. It's as if they didn't think through the obvious consequence. The moment they rushed to bring the three Tiangong astronauts safely back home, the next three astronauts ended up stranded. And the issue isn't that the China manned space agency used the incoming crew's spacecraft to bring the previous crew back. The real problem is what they left behind. The Shenzhou 21 crew is now sitting on the station without a lifeboat. The only vehicle they have is Shenzhou 20, and that capsule just had its window cracked by orbital debris. It's no longer considered safe for re-entry. China is still trying to figure out what to do with it, yet somehow they're keeping a full crew on board with a damaged spacecraft as their only way out. It's basically saying, if anything goes wrong on Tiangong, just climb into the capsule with the broken window and hope for the best. Unsurprisingly, this has drawn heavy criticism from other spacefaring nations, who argue that China isn't taking the health or even the lives of its astronauts seriously enough. So, in an effort to rebuild their standing in the eyes of the international community, China quickly introduced a fix for the problem. And what is that fix? Well, China is now getting ready to launch another uncrewed Shenzhou spacecraft to Tiangong. Its job is simple, give the Shenzhou 21 astronauts a proper lifeboat. On top of that, it'll bring along some supplies for science work, new tech equipment, and even a bit of food, like chicken wings, so the crew can keep their little celebrations going up there with the brand new space microwave. This move became clear after an airspace closure notice was issued on November 17th, stating that China is preparing to launch Shenzhou 22 aboard a Long March 2F around the night of November 24th from the Juquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. Even so, the China Manned Space Agency hasn't officially released a full rescue plan yet. But here's the timeline. The second crew got stranded on November 14th. That's when Tiangong had zero lifeboats left. And if the replacement vehicle docks around November 25th as expected, that means China is taking roughly 10 days to restore a safe escape option for their astronauts. Well, rescue might not even be the right word, because the Shenzhou 21 crew will still continue their mission for more than five months. The real issue is that the station must have a docked spacecraft at all times, both to boost its orbit and to serve as an emergency ride home if something goes wrong. And with this move, China is highlighting just how quickly they can respond to a problem. The contrast is pretty stark compared to the Starliner situation, where astronauts Suni and Butch remained stuck on the ISS for nearly nine months. But Hold on a second, can we really compare these two situations? One was caused by technical flaws in Starliner, while the other was triggered by a completely external factor. A piece of orbital debris punching through a window. Of course, the causes have nothing to do with how each agency chose to handle the problem. So, let's talk about NASA's response first. Right after discovering the serious helium leaks and thruster issues on Starliner, this was around June 2024, NASA didn't sit around waiting. They acted fast and decisively. But then, why did it still take nine months to bring SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore home? It's simple. NASA puts astronaut safety above everything else, especially when those astronauts have dedicated decades of their lives to the space program. That's why Administrator Bill Nelson and Associate Administrator Jim Free made it official. Even though Starliner still had a 96 to 97 percent chance of returning safely, NASA wasn't willing to accept the remaining 3 to 4 percent risk. So, they completely removed Starliner as a landing option. After that, NASA immediately worked with SpaceX to reconfigure the Crew-9 mission. The original plan was to launch four astronauts. Now, it would only launch two, Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbunov, leaving two empty seats for Suni and Butch. At the same time, NASA asked SpaceX to extend the docked Crew-8 Dragon by nearly a month, just to make sure the ISS always had a lifeboat available, exactly the situation Tiangong is dealing with recently. But because SpaceX's launch schedule was already packed solid, they couldn't simply accelerate the mission. Everything had to follow the existing plan. 
And since the ISS has plenty of capability, oxygen production, water recycling, long-term food supplies, NASA agreed to wait. So it wasn't until March 2025 that Dragon Crew 9 finally brought everyone home. And after that, SpaceX's and Elon Musk's reputation shot through the roof. Meanwhile, China cut their station crew from six down to three as fast as possible, not because the mission required it, but because they weren't confident their system could safely support that many people for long. Bringing Shenzhou 20 home so quickly didn't show careful planning, it showed how desperate and risky their approach was. That's why, even though both situations involve rescue missions, the outcomes couldn't be more different. SpaceX got praised. Even former President Donald Trump stepped in, saying, Elon is able to do that with his genius. Number one, they have to get better. I expect to welcome Will Moore and Williams to the Oval Office once they get better. China, on the other hand, got nothing but harsh criticism. And honestly, NASA's slow but safe approach didn't disrupt anything. Sunni and Butch themselves said they never felt stranded. They treated it as a once-in-a-lifetime experience, becoming the longest-staying U.S. astronauts in orbit. And on top of that, Trump even joked that he'd personally pay their salaries during the extra months. China's quick response was impressive in terms of speed, but it crossed into being reckless. And while many ordinary citizens might disagree with the government's approach, they don't exactly have the freedom to say it out loud. You know what I mean. According to an official from China's Manned Space Engineering Office speaking on November 15th, the Shenzhou 22 spacecraft, originally scheduled to carry the next crew to Tiangong in April or May of 2026, will now launch without astronauts. He noted that preparations are already underway, and this uncrewed vehicle will bring up food, daily supplies, and new equipment to keep the Shenzhou 21 crew going. With the Shenzhou 20 crew staying far longer than planned, Tiangong's supplies are getting tight, and the life support systems are feeling the extra load, so that pretty much confirms everything we've just talked about. At this point, the timeline for launching this backup Shenzhou depends on a whole list of variables. The readiness of Launch Complex 921, the same pad that just sent up Shenzhou 21, local weather conditions, range safety, orbital mechanics between Jiuquan and Tiangong, and the technical status of both the rocket and the spacecraft. Even if the hardware is good to go, China still has to wait for the right orbital alignment, which means several extra days of delay are entirely possible. As for Shenzhou 20, China plans to deorbit it sometime later. In theory, the spacecraft is still attached to the station and accessible, but CMSEO has already concluded it's not safe enough to bring anyone home. In a statement released on November 14th, the agency said that after reviewing images, running simulations, Checking the design and performing wind tunnel testing, they found a small crack on the outer heat-resistant glass of the crew cabin window. The most likely cause? An impact from orbital debris. Because of that crack, the vehicle no longer meets the safety requirements for a crewed return flight. Instead, Shenzhou 20 will remain in orbit to support a series of planned experiments. That crack, sitting on the outer thermal layer of the window, poses a serious risk. If it spreads or breaks during re-entry, the inner layers could be exposed to superheated plasma that could compromise the window structure and lead to depressurization of the spacecraft, a life-threatening scenario. From there, the comparison becomes almost ironic. In five years of Crew Dragon flights, SpaceX has never faced a problem like this. The closest incident happened during the Crew-2 mission in 2021, when a piece of debris roughly the size of a softball, and traced back to Japan's H-2A rocket, passed within just one to two kilometers of the capsule as it approached the ISS. The crew had to suit up and strap into their seats just in case, but nothing happened, and ISS controllers simply adjusted the station's orbit to steer clear. And even if a strike had occurred, Crew Dragon is built with layered Whipple shielding, a dual-wall protective system, designed to absorb impacts from tiny micrometeoroids and small debris under a millimeter in size, so the odds of serious damage were still extremely low. Meanwhile, across the space industry, other rocket programs were making headlines of their own. On November 17th, Blue Origin's New Glenn booster was safely transported back to Port Canaveral after its first ever successful landing. As soon as it touched down, Jeff Bezos celebrated like a child returning home after years away posting a flurry of photos on X, basically showing off to Elon Musk, 
Given their rivalry, it's clear Bezos wants Musk's recognition. And Blue Origin isn't stopping there. They want to cement their case even further. How? By reusing that very booster for the next new Glenn launch, currently planned for early next year. Coincidentally, this timing lines up with SpaceX's first launch of Starship Block 3. It almost seems like Blue Origin is pressuring itself to fly before SpaceX. Historically, the company has struggled with these milestones, and it's still unclear if this time will be any different. That said, there's a real concern. Refurbishing a recovered first stage could push back the next launch schedule. New Glenn was designed for a fast turnaround, two to three weeks between flights, but nobody expected that pace right out of the gate during the first refurbishment cycle. Still, Bezos' rocket company believes the risk of a short delay is worth it. Even slipping a few weeks probably won't significantly impact their long-term flight plans. The upcoming New Glenn mission is expected to carry the Blue Moon Mark I lander, an uncrewed spacecraft built to test key systems for NASA's Artemis V mission in 2029. Launching Mark I in early 2026 would be ideal, but if the schedule slips, the mission isn't in jeopardy. In fact, CEO Dave Limp has said the lander could be shifted to New Glenn's fourth flight if necessary. The message is clear. No rush, and development progress remains tightly under control. Another concern raised by critics is the launch cadence. Could delays prevent Blue Origin from ramping up to a reliable flight rhythm? But that misses a more fundamental point. You can't maintain a cadence without hardware. At the moment, the company hasn't committed to a fixed number of New Glenn launches for 2026. Instead, this year's focus is on building up a reserve of boosters. According to Dave Limp, Blue Origin aims to produce around 20 first stages per year, making sure the infrastructure is in place before making any promises about a rapid launch cycle. As he put it, that's the next step we need to sit down with the team on.